Today on Shop Nation, I give you a tour of my home office slash indoor makerspace. What's up you guys, welcome back. I'm Travis with Shop Nation. As you can tell, we're not building something today. Full transparency, I just didn't have time. Turns out babies are a lot of work. But I do get a fair amount of questions about my office, so I thought I'd take the time to give a tour because I haven't done so in a while and I've made a lot of updates that I haven't necessarily featured on the channel. So on top of the space is serving as my home office for my day job, I also use it to make all the content for Shop Nation. But in addition to that, it's also a miniature maker space that I use to make all kinds of stuff. Now there's no heavy equipment up here, but there's no reason why you couldn't. One of my all-time favorite YouTube channels is called NYC CNC, and it started with John Sanders living in an apartment in New York City with a machine shop next to his bed. Anybody that comes up with the excuse that they don't have the space for something, go watch those early videos, then come talk to me. So yeah, I probably could have some tools up here. But if you're a subscriber, you know that I have a shop that I'm building out that I can put all that stuff in. All I'm trying to say is don't let your space define what you think you can or can't do. So let's go ahead and get started. Come on in the office. Now this room is oriented in sort of a long and narrow way. And there's also sort of a low cathedral ceiling that you can see behind me. Really what that means is it limits the wall space that I can really use. But with anything, a little creativity goes a long way. Now with the door behind me, the corner directly to your left when you walk into the room, I actually have an AC unit that's hooked up in this corner. This room is kind of added as a last minute addition, and because of that, the AC is not really balanced. So in the summertime, it gets pretty warm up here, so I put in this little temporary AC unit that I run maybe for two months out of the year on occasion. Now I realize it is redneck and quick and dirty, but it serves the purpose. I actually had a mini split quoted for this space, and it was like $6,000 to get the lines run all the way outside. So I said, mm, no. So basically what I did is created an interface on this wall. On the other side of this wall is the attic. So I have a tube running through the attic, dumping the hot air into the soffit outside. Again, I know if you're an HVAC professional, you're laughing right now, but it works. I also have a plate so that if I want to take this out, I can seal that off and not let all the hot air from the attic into the room. Next to the AC unit is a guitar that I don't play. And then next to that guitar is the EnviroCleanse air cleaner. I featured this in the workbench video that I showed. It's a really solid air cleaner and I found that I use it the most when I do 3D printing. Now, depending on what material you're using for 3D printing, they can emit some nasty vapors. So I'll kick this thing on every once in a while to help scrub the air in the room. And yes, I went to the University of Tennessee. I'm a Tennessee football fan, um, but with that being said, it's been a rough 10 years. If you know, you know. Now the corner immediately to the right when you walk in my office has these two doors. One goes into the attic, which is actually really useful because I can just go in there instead of climbing up and down a ladder. And then there's a closet right here. And there's a very specific reason why it's closed. And that's because it's full of junk. In here, I keep a lot of books and boxes that I use to ship things and my drone and camera equipment and all of the above. It's kind of the junk drawer of my office. And let's be honest, every space has one. Now, the first thing you see when you walk in my office is a couch and a TV. I'll be honest, I have yet to use it but I got the couch for like 200 bucks at Walmart and you can definitely tell if you sit on it. And it's really just to fill the space or for when my wife comes up and wants to ask me a bunch of questions while I'm working. She sits right there. Above the couch, I've got some cool mechanic patent drawings that I bought off of Etsy. I'm an engineer, I enjoy that kind of stuff. I think it looks really cool in the space. Directly across from the couch is the TV. I hardly ever use it. It's usually just background noise while I'm working. Now this bookcase below it serves as some storage for me. On the lower shelves are four baskets. Within those baskets, I store 3D printing filament. So I've got a variety of colors and materials, and I've got a stock of materials for when I make the 3D printed stop blocks that I sell in my Etsy store. And then as we scoot down the wall from the TV and bookshelf, we get to the desk. Now I built this desk a while ago. It was a video on the channel, so if you're interested in how I made it, go check it out. And it is awesome, I love this thing. I designed it exactly for my space and my needs, and it's working out great. I also took the time to kind of personalize my desk and put things around it that I generally like or are inspiring to me. So I'm a huge space nut, so there's the Saturn V rocket. I like everything to do with jets and airplanes and things like that. So I have a cutaway 3D printed jet engine model that I made. And then I've been an OG Lego fan since I was a little kid, so I've got a Ferrari up there as well. Kind of stupid stuff, but it personalizes the space and makes it my own. Now those shelves above the desk were also a video that I did. And you'll notice that these shelves on the left side of my monitor have since been reinforced. And I did this because I started loading them up with pretty heavy stuff and they started to sag a little bit. But this is where I showcase a lot of the machined or 3D printed metal parts that I have or that I'm working with. So I'm also a big nut on all things manufacturing, especially machining and 3D printing and all of the above. So this kind of stuff I just love to look at. And I think it's really cool just to have around. 
Now I try to keep a very clean desk when possible. Not gonna say I didn't clean it before the video, but as a rule, I work better when my desk is cleared off. So I try and choose the things that I keep on my desk very intentionally and keep it to a minimum number of items. I've got two basic speakers, a monitor stand that I made, a widescreen 29 inch monitor, and a small plant. Are you even working if you don't have a small plant? Come on. And then directly opposite my desk is my 3D printing workstation. Now this is kind of the maker space of my office and it features a MarkForge X7 printer, which is freaking awesome. I'll tell you a little bit about that. I also built this custom stand for the MarkForge printer that houses my 2D printer below it. And then a Prusa Mark III that I have behind it. And between those two printers, I can do lots of different stuff. So I make fixtures and jigs for my shop. I do kind of fun projects that I just like to do, like the jet engine cutaway model. And then I also print products, like the 3D printed stop block that I sell on my Etsy store. So it's half business and half fun, but I really enjoy it. My career is centered around 3D printing, if you didn't know. So for the past three years, I've spent a lot of time doing 3D printing and design for 3D printing. Now what I love about this space is that I was very intentional on what I wanted. So in the bank of drawers, I have all the tools that I ever need to either work on the printers themselves or assemble parts that I'm making as a general assembly. Underneath those tools is storage for hardware that I use most commonly on my 3D printed parts, including heat set inserts, bolts, nuts, things like that. I featured that in a hardware organization video if you haven't checked that out. The system's working really well and I've since actually needed to expand it, so I probably need to add another drawer. Below those are some more materials for 3D printing. On the other side, I've got a drawer with a lot of miscellaneous printed parts that are kind of mid-project or don't really have a home. I've got a drawer with a lot of my electronics components like Arduino. I have kind of the staging for the 3D printed stop blocks. So I have all the components that go into those assemblies. So as orders come in, I print a block and assemble it, and ship it out. It's kind of the perfect supply chain model and it's what a lot of businesses are starting to realize is that not holding inventory and printing on demand is hugely valuable. And then lastly, some of that overflow hardware that I still need to add more boxes. So on the wall above the workbench, I've got mounts for all of the tools that I most commonly use, again, on the printers themselves or on the components that I use to assemble the parts. I've got a rack on the wall to hold some of the 3D printing filament. All of that is for the Prusa printer. And then I made this cool custom press for installing heat set inserts into 3D printed parts. So I'm usually a huge proponent of functional 3D printing, 3D printing that actually helps you do something or creates value. But there's times when 3D printing can just be fun too. And this is one example of that. So this is an open source Nerf blaster called the FDL3 that is totally 3D printed. So I 3D printed all the parts. It's got all the mechanical internals to make this thing work. I still have to add the electronics. There's some brushless motors that sit here that actually shoot the darts. Um, you can tune it for speed and all kinds of crazy stuff. Again, this is just for fun. I'm probably just gonna hang this on the wall, to be honest, but it's an example of how 3D printing can be fun as well. And you can imagine, when my kid's old enough, we're gonna build one of these and he's gonna pick out all the colors. We're gonna go through the process of designing the parts, setting them up, printing them. And he'll not only have a really cool Nerf blaster at the end of it, but he'll learn a lot along the way. So, pretty cool. So I wanna talk real briefly about the MarkForge X7. Now full transparency, I work for MarkForge, which is why I have an industrial printer sitting in my office. If you don't know much about 3D printing, you might just think that it is plastic and the bounds of applications are pretty limited because let's be honest, there's only so much you can do with plastic. What makes this thing insane is not only that it's built really well, but it actually reinforces parts with continuous fiber. So it prints full composites. So here's an example of what I mean. Here's a wrench with a metal insert and it has continuous Kevlar actually printed around the entire part. What the heck does that mean? Well, it means for the finished wrench, which is this one, again, same metal insert. It's, it's stronger than aluminum. So this plastic part printed on this machine in a matter of hours, you can generate something that's stronger than aluminum. So now the scope of what you can do with 3D printing starts to grow quite a bit. So MarkForged also sells a low cost metal 3D printer, which is what these inserts were printed in. These are 17-4 stainless steel. You can also print in tool steels, Inconel, titanium, and even copper. So that's why you keep hearing me lecture on 3D printing and what it can do, because out there in the field, I'm seeing customers do some crazy stuff utilizing this kind of technology. Food for thought. So anyway, that's my office in a nutshell. Hopefully it sparked an idea or two on how you can improve your space or your office or your maker space. But I found a common thread across pretty much everything I do, whether it be the shop or in this office. If you take that little incremental step to make it that much better, it makes a huge impact. It's not a linear relationship. So because I've been very intentional with the space on what I want it to do and look like, in my opinion, the functionality 
is way higher. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about the space. I've got some really cool projects teed up for the channel that are back down in the shop. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe now. And if you enjoyed the video, I always appreciate a like. And I'll do a real quick subscriber update. Let me refresh. As of right now, we're at 60,740 subscribers. Holy guacamole. For whatever reason, my last video about the lighting in my garage was a big hit. YouTube is an interesting creature. I can never tell what's gonna do well and what's not. All right, I will see you guys on the next project. And as always, continue to pursue shop and office greatness.